of the War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman. Fierce battles are raging in Libya. Forces loyal to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi have launched new assaults in an attempt to regain control of several towns that have been captured in a popular uprising over the past two weeks. Earlier today, Gaddafi addressed a small group of supporters in Tripoli in his third televised appearance. He continued to deny the uprising, saying opposition to him is led by terrorists and all al-Qaeda operatives. Meanwhile, two U.S. warships have moved through the Suez Canal into the Mediterranean after orders by Defense Secretary Robert Gates that they should move closer to Libya. For more, we're joined by Horace Campbell, professor of African American Studies and Political Science at Syracuse University. He's written extensively on African politics. He's joining us now by Democracy Now! video stream from his home. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Professor Campbell. Your assessment of the situation in Libya. Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting us to discuss the delicate stage of the revolutionary situation in Libya. It is a situation that is maturing with very deliberate and great dangers for the revolutionaries. The dangers arise from a number of areas. Firstly, the massacres that have been carried out by Gaddafi himself and the clique around Gaddafi. Secondly, the dangers that are coming from the drum beats for Western military intervention. And thirdly, the kind of xenophobia and anti-African, anti-black sentiment that is being stirred up among sectors of the Libyans who are rising up for freedom. So in this context, it is very important for those who have solidarity with the Libyan uprising, with those fighting for freedom in Libya, to support the people in Libya and at the same time denounce any attempts by the Western forces, especially the elements within the administration in the United States and Great Britain for military intervention. We have seen from the testimony yesterday from the Senate Mid, um, for Armed Services Committee that the chairperson of the Joint Chief of Staff is very uncomfortable with military intervention. Gates is uncomfortable with military intervention, and the head of um, the, the, the U.S. Central Command said that a, a no-fly zone is a prelude to military activity. And then, on the other hand, we have John McCain, Joe Lieberman, and Hillary Clinton, and those forces calling for a no-fly zone and military intervention. It is up to the peace and justice movement in this country to stand with one voice to say that at this point, any kind of humanitarian intervention must be through the United Nations and to support those who are suffering at the border and those who are suffering inside of Libya. We do not need military intervention by Britain, the United States, or any forces of NATO at this present moment. Mm. Uh, Professor Campbell, um, when you hear forces loyal to Muammar Gaddafi, I don't know if that's actually an accurate term uh, because of the number of people he is paying to um, to do this, to fight the pro-democracy groups. But can you talk about the mercenaries and where they come from and why they would support Muammar Gaddafi or work for him? Well, I am I'm going to be very careful of the use of the term mercenaries because every government that say they have the control over state power use the instruments of the state to employ persons to fight for that state. So the fact that the United States of America employs other nationals to fight their wars in Iraq or Afghanistan, those persons are not called mercenaries. So I want to be very careful in the use of this term mercenaries. Gaddafi and his children have access to billions of dollars. There are many citizens of countries all over the world, from the Middle East and from Africa, who have been in Libya, especially those from Africa who were aligned with forces like Charles Taylor from Liberia, Fodisanko from the Sierra Leone, the elements from Chad where Gaddafi has been supporting for many years. Added to this, there are a number of Africans who are kept prisoners 
in Libya were caught trying to escape to Europe because they believed in the freedom of movement of labor, just as in the international economy we have the freedom of capital. Now, many of these persons have been caught in this battle, and some Africans who are being paid by Gaddafi are called mercenaries. Now, one has to do intense work among the governments of these states to do the diplomatic work to extricate their citizens who are caught in this fighting. And one has to also, at the same time, do very clear, deliberate work with the people fighting for freedom in Libya, that they do not, in their fight for freedom, whip up any kind of xenophobia against Africans, as if Libya is not an African country, or what we would say against black Africans who are caught in this crossfire of Gaddafi manipulating citizens who were supposed to fight to keep him and his family in power.